Alex used 240 tutoring to pass the FTCE exams. The material and practice exams helped Alex to get over that important hurdle and get into the classroom. My name's Jessica Solano, and I've worked in education in Florida for about 14 years. In fact, I was the 2017 Florida Teacher of the Year. Now I get to partner with 240 and help teachers in Florida pass those certification exams. And today, I get to help you. This video is gonna prepare you for the FTCE General Knowledge Reading Subtest. This video is gonna cover three things. What's on the test and how to study for it, the most likely concepts that'll be on the test, and we're gonna throw in a few practice questions. The FTCE General Knowledge, or GK for short, is intended to measure the basic skills required to be a teacher in the state of Florida. It's a part of every Florida teacher certification journey. The GK is divided into four subtests, essay, English language skills, reading, and mathematics. But for now, we are just gonna focus on reading, so keep watching. The GK reading subtest consists of three competencies, knowledge of key ideas and details based on text selections, knowledge of craft and structure based on text selections, and knowledge of the integration of information and ideas based on text selections. I like to make these a bit easier to digest. There we go, much better. Each competency has skills that go along with it. There are about 40 multiple choice questions on the subtest in all, and they're all based on reading passages. The passages on the exam will be both expository, which is meant to explain, and narrative, which tells a story. There will be approximately five passages on the exam, so the 40 questions will be based on five passages in all. Competency one is worth the largest portion of the exam at 40%, so let's start here. Competency one has eight skills that go along with it, and they all cover working with key ideas and details from the reading passages that you'll see. Textual evidence means the part of the passage that led you to choosing your answer. Your choice should be based on the passage, not your own experience or background knowledge about the topic. Ready to hear about more key concepts from this competency? We'll go over some right now, but everything you need to prepare yourself for this exam is ready for you in our study guide, and you can find that link below. Right now, let's discuss working with the main idea or primary purpose of a passage. These may also be known as the central idea, or the primary reason, or the central message, or main purpose, but I digress. No matter what we're calling it, let's get to the main point, shall we? One of the most important things you can do when working with a reading passage is identify the main idea and primary purpose of the text. Simply put, the main idea is the point. The primary purpose is the why. So for example, if I write a short essay on how to make the perfect ice cream sundae, my main idea is how to teach you how to make the sundae, and my primary purpose is to get you to make me the sundae. All right, focus. Remember, you'll be asked about passages, but always first figure out the main idea and purpose. Need practice on this? Our study guide gives you some great tips. You know what? Let's take a look at what that's gonna look like after you subscribe. Here we go. Read the passage, summarize it to a friend, check the first and last sentence, pick a choice that summarizes the whole passage. And remember, you will have to expand upon the main idea and purpose to answer some of those questions. For those, you'll have to identify supporting ideas, pick the best summary, and pick the best title. Now, if only there was someone who had created tips and examples of each of these skills and maybe had them all available as videos. Just saying. All right, let's move on to the competency worth the next biggest chunk at 35%. Competency three covers integration of information and ideas. What does that even mean? Let's take a look at the skills that go along with it. I see some higher level Bloom's words, evaluate, synthesize, and analyze. We're gonna do some deep thinking here. Questions from this competency also involve working with multiple texts at the same time. And there's one more thing I really wanna zoom in on for you. And here it is. Evaluate specific claims. Claims are points made in the text. One way you'll be asked to evaluate them is by determining whether they are fact or opinion. Need to freshen up on this? Here are the facts about facts. 
Facts are often presented as statistics, data, numbers, or general knowledge. Facts can be proven. So here's an example. The atmosphere is about 78% nitrogen gas. Let's take a peek inside our study guide to hear more about opinions. Now let's talk about opinions. Sometimes the author will directly let you know they're stating an opinion. Look for phrases like, I believe, or I think. Opinions use qualifying words or terms. Qualifiers modify the meaning of the words they come before or after by limiting it or enhancing them. Some examples are very, usually, always, and never. Did you like what you saw? Well, it's my opinion that you would love all the study guides that we have on 240. Or maybe that's a fact. All right, one competency to go. Competency two covers the craft and structure of text. This refers to how authors use certain language and organization to give their writing meaning and style. Working with multiple texts pops up again in this competency too. But do you know what I think will give you the most bang for your buck here? Meaning it's bound to come up on your exam? Determining the meaning of words using contextual, syntactic, and semantic clues. This is more than just knowing what words mean. You'll need to determine what they mean by how they're used in the passage. Want to see another example? I thought you would. The teacher told us to line up in alphabetical order. Since Smith supersedes Wilson, Susie was in front of me in line. In this sentence, a reader could use their understanding of alphabetical order and the context clue in front of me to infer the meaning of supersede as coming before. Want to see another one? Okay, but don't tell anyone, I gave you a bonus one. For this one, the placement of the word or where it falls within the syntax of the sentence will be key. My ornery big brother yelled at me when I walked in front of the TV while he was playing video games. In this sentence, a reader who recognizes that the word ornery is an adjective used to describe the author's big brother could then use the context clue yelled at me to infer that ornery means something negative. Now that we've gone over some of the big concepts in our three areas, let's look at some practice questions to show you how those concepts can appear on the test. Now, if you want a lot of practice questions, you can click the free practice test below. At the end, you get a score report on how well you did on the test. And then you can subscribe to 240 and get all the practice questions you need to be 100% confident for the test. Now for the questions. Since this exam is passage-based, let's practice this way. We'll start by reading a passage and then we'll answer questions about it. This is called the art of bookbinding. Let's get to it. In the sixth century, bookbinding had already taken its place as an art, for we have the Byzantine coatings, as they're called. They are of metal, gold, silver, or copper gilt, and sometimes they're enriched with precious stones. The monks during this century took advantage of the immense thickness of the wooden boards and frequently hollowed them out to secrete their relics in the cavities. Bookbinding was then confined entirely to the monks, who were the literati of the period. Then the art was neglected for some centuries, owing to the plunder and pillage that overran Europe, and books were destroyed to get at the jewels that were supposed to be hidden in the different parts of the covering, so that few now remain to show how bookbinding was then accomplished and to what extent. We must now pass on to the Middle Ages, when samples of binding were brought from the East by the Crusaders, and these may well be prized by their owners for their delicacy of finish. The monks, who still held the art of bookbinding in their hands, improved upon these Eastern specimens. Each one devoted himself to a different branch. One planed the oaken boards to a proper size, another stretched and colored the leather, and the work was thus divided into branches as it is now. The task was one of great difficulty, seeing how rude the implements were then in use. All right, let's start by finding the main idea. This passage is primarily concerned with those responsible for creating the first book cover, the process of bookbinding, the artistic expression of monks, or the history of bookbinding. This last one is our best bet. The passage covers multiple points in the history of bookbinding, describing the historical context and the process of creating them. This is the primary focus. Now let's practice drawing a conclusion. Which of the following conclusions is best supported by the passage? This one's our best choice. 
The author describes the beginnings of elaborate carvings in art created on the bindings as a result of new and sturdy materials used by bookbinders. This is an appropriate conclusion that we can draw from the passage. Ready to distinguish between fact and opinion? All of the following are statements of fact supported by the passage, except this is an example of an opinion. While the author does state that the work of middle-aged monks was difficult because of their rude implements, he does not provide evidence as to whether their task was more difficult than earlier bookbinders. Last one, ready to analyze some evidence? Which of the following details most supports the author's view that early bookbinding was a form of art? Here's our best choice. The author describes the bookbindings as a prize because of their delicate finishings. This word choice indicates the author's opinion that these covers were exceptional and artistic. Now that's just a small sampling of practice questions to give you an idea about how you'll be asked about reading passages on the test. Congratulations on finishing the video. If you found it helpful, give it a like. There's still plenty more to practice. Did you know that thousands of teachers have passed their certification exams by preparing with our study guides? If you really want to make sure that you're prepared for the FTCE General Knowledge Reading Test, take the next step and study the 240 Study Guide. It has hours of video, so you can watch or listen while doing your chores. It's test aligned, so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions, so you can be sure you're ready. Best of all, it has a money back guarantee. So click the link below right now and get started.